So I'll initiate the recording of the session and the recording will be shared with all of you at the end of the session. I'll initiate the record. So perfect. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you who have joined us. Some of you are joining from other parts of the world. So accordingly, greetings to you. Thank you everyone. I welcome you all to today's webinar on regulatory medical writing. Regulatory medical writing plays a very crucial role in various stages of clinical trials and to get the products approved by the regulatory bodies. The medical writers involved in the regulatory medical writing come from diverse backgrounds and help churn out complex scientific information to simple language, easy to understand for the target audience. Our target audience is primarily the regulatory bodies and the healthcare professionals. However, our target audience can be anyone who consumes medical content. It can be the patients and their caretakers also. In today's, our today's speaker, Daniela Nakagawa, is a regulatory medical writer with previous experience in scientific writing and academic research. Daniela has done her MS and then her PhD from Universitat Pompero Fabra, Barcelona, Spain. She is an avid blogger and researcher. You may find more about her when she shares her story in the session today. So I welcome you, Daniela. Just you know, wave your hand so that participants can see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. See, hi, Manos. Hi, Daniela. Hi. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for having me. It's uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So Daniela advocates lean writing and plain language summary in regulatory writing. You know, these days we are talking a lot about you know. Uh, plain language summaries and lean writing and easy to understand language. And she is the one who advocates all of that. She uh, supports uh, her current company with copywriting and business development to reach aspiring medical writers and help them get into this profession, wonderful profession, I must say. Daniela is a native sp Spanish speaker and she lives in Germany. She proves that we don't have to have the native uh, English speaking capabilities to work as a medical writer and we can all learn writing easily. With this short intro, I now welcome Daniela to take over the session and help us all understand more about regulatory medical writing. Thank you, Daniela. Please stay, continue from here. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you for the presentation, uh, for the introduction, and thank you everyone for joining um, today. Um, <clears throat> So today I'll talk to you about the why, what, and how of regulatory medical writing. Um, and and how can you become a medical writer? So the, the why of the profession of regulatory medical writing um, is to support the development of safe and efficacious drugs for patients. That's, that's the, the main core of the, of the profession. Uh, drug development from preclinical pre and clinical to post um, to phase Daniela, four. Sorry or... to interrupt. You may share your screen and uh, continue, please. Oh, sorry, I I haven't. Yeah, no. <laughs> let me let me. Oh, sorry for that. Um, wait. Share screen. Okay, sorry for that. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Can you see it yeah, now? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Um. I was, as I was saying, the, the reason to be of, of the, the why of the profession um, in medical, of regulatory medical writing is, is the drug development, is to support the development of drugs, of safe and efficacious drugs for patients. That's the, the reason to be of the regulatory medical writing um, profession. Um, drug development, as you might um, probably some of you already know, goes from preclinical uh, pre and clinical to post-marketing or phase four um, here in the picture. Um, and, and as I said, is the reason to be of, of regulatory medical writing. Through this process, there are some documents to write, and that's what we do. We support this process with our writing. And, but this is the why of the profession. <clears throat> um, and I invite you to ask yourself, what would be your why to write? 
Um, I think like, I, I can, I, I will give you some um, of the, the reasons I, I, I write um, and you can come up with your own whys <laughs> to write. Um, but I think you need to have a passion for helping patients. You want to make a difference in the life of others. And that's one, like your, could be one of your, of your core reasons to, to become a regulatory medical writer. Another reason to become a regulatory medical writer is because you love writing. You know, you get lost in the process and you enjoy it above all. Um, you have to like to play with this, with words and coming up with beautiful sentences that are clear, concise, and, and this takes time and a lot of uh, brain resources. So you have to enjoy it because otherwise you will suffer in your job. And in this case, in the case of regulatory medical writing, it's, it's a very it's more like a scientific writing. So if you're more, if you are more like a creative writer, this might not be the profession for you, you know. And but there are other kinds of, of medical writing um, um, areas that you can in which you can apply more your creative writing. But regulatory medical writing, it's not that creative. It doesn't leave much space for creative writing. But it leaves a lot of space for scientific writing. <laughs> And if you like this, this kind of writing, then this might be the, the profession for you. Um, and finally, um, you, one, one reason to become a regulatory medical writer could be that you um, like, and that you, do you have a passion for medical science? You like to know about medical conditions, the research methods of clinical trials, and want to help and bring in science forward. You, you, you're a um, passionate of the scientific method applied in the medical, in the medical sciences. Um, these two questions, the, the why of regulatory medical writing and your why to become a regulatory medical writer are very important to have clarity um, if you are deciding which type of medical writer you want to, be, to do, what, what, sorry, what type of medical writing you want to do, because they will support you when dealing with the what and the how of regulatory medical writing. You know, as, as any career, this career has its ups and downs. And in those downs, um, you might, um, you, you have to go back to your why and the why of the profession and your own why. Why are you doing this? And, and these, are the, these are my whys. And I invite you to reflect. Um, you can share it on the chat if you want uh, or do it privately um, to reflect on, the, on, this, on this question. Um, so Nali, uh, she's raising or um, raising her hand. Um, and do you have a question? Do you think you can unmute yourself? No? So Nali, you want okay. to ask a question? Uh, I think she just... Um, yeah, okay. No. We'll take up the questions at, at the end of the session. Uh, you know, you can keep writing your questions in a notepad or something. And then mm -hmm. uh, we shall take up all the questions at the end of the session. Um, so what do we write? Um, medical writers write all the documents needed during the, the drug development process, as I said at the beginning. And just to give you an idea of, of all the documents that we write, these are not all the documents that we write, there are more, um, but this is a cloud of, of, of one, some of those documents. So there are many documents that we write. And through these documents, the pharmaceutical companies communicate with the regulatory agencies. Each document aims to communicate something specific. <clears throat> the drug development process starts in drug discovery and some of these few drugs, as I said, you, you some of, or if not all of you already know this, um, they go, they, some of these drugs, um, very few, go to the drug development phase and from there to the non-clinical tests. And here, as you can see, there's some already docu some documents to write, but if you're a regulatory medical writer, you won't write these documents. It's more, it's a specialist, a specialist writer that um, he or she specializes in this, in writing this kind of documents. But if you're a regulatory medical writer, you're gonna start writing in this phase in, when the clinical trials start. Um, Clinical trials are, you know, there are three phases of clinical trials and each phase has a startup and conduct and close out, close out um, phase, stage. And in the startup um, stage um, of, of a clinical trial in any phase, 
there are some documents already to write. So there's the protocol, uh, the informed consent form, an investigational medicinal product dossier, and an investigator's brochure. Once the, cl the clinical trial has started, the protocol might change, and this requires the need to protocol amendments. And in this stage, there, um, the statistical analysis plan will also be written together with a statistician. <laughs> the, I, I, um, if, if you're not, if, if, if you're, I mean, you're specialized in, in writing and you're not a biostatistician, and if you are, I mean, that's great. You know, if you come from biostatistics and then you became a medical, a medical writer, you're gonna understand this <laughs> uh, document quite well, but don't, don't worry if you don't, uh, this document and all the statistical um, sections of the documents, of the um, regulatory documents are written together with, not only with the statistics, I mean, in this case with the statisticians, but other documents are written with, uh, the team with the team as well and you're not alone on this process um so after the conduct um becomes the close out and at, in this stage the clinical study report is written together with the statistical outputs and the lay summary <clears throat> which entails uh, in, in lay language um an explanation of the, of the entire trial Documents written in the previous stages will be included in the clinical study report as appendices. And once a drug has been tested in phase one, two, and three, and, and, and one, uh, sorry, in phase one, two, and three clinical trials, and all these documents have, have been written in each phase. So you have to write each, all these documents in each phase. Um, you put together all this in the clinical study report plus these documents, which are the quality uh, overall summary and clinical and non-clinical summaries and overviews, and the summary, product of a character, summary, summary of product characteristics, package leaflet and risk management plan. All these are documents. You put them all together in what it's called a common technical document. And this is a document uh, presented to the regulatory authorities uh, when applying for marketing authorization. The pyramid here represents all these documents. Module one is regional uh, information uh, that doesn't come from the, from the trials. Uh, module two, which is this section, are these documents, the quality of our overall summary and clinical and non-clinical summaries and overviews. Module three is um, all the clinical, pharmaceutical and bio biological data. Now module four are the non-clinical study reports. And module five are the clinical study reports. So all these documents, all, yeah, from the different phases. After the CT is sent to the regulatory agencies, in this example, to the European Medicines Association or EMA, and the agencies assess all the data, they reply with questions. And this is another document that medical writers together with the experts um, write, answering the questions of the, of the agency. If, that's, that document is sent back to the agency. And if they're happy with your answers, if it, they make sense, they will give you marketing approval. Once the, the drug is in the market, comes post-marketing phase or phase four, which corresponds to the information gathered about a drug in the real world in this phase. Um, during this phase, which lasts until the drug stops being available in the market, Safety documents like the periodic safety update report or PSUR um, are updated on a year yearly basis. So the process continues, you know, because a drug, as long as it's in the market, it's going to need some documents to be written about it as, um, every, every year. So even if a drug is already in the market, it's still a process of, of medical writing behind it, about it, about the drug behind it. Um, so as you can see, there is a lot to write in the process of developing a drug. All the documents in the white, um, I'm sorry, on the yellow boxes are, are documents written by medic regulatory medical writers during the drug development process. So there's a lot of work. <clears throat> so how we write. Um, a regulatory medical writing project means having to write one of the documents we just mentioned. So you get a request for writing a document, and that will be what's called like a, a regulatory medical writing project. 
In general, projects follow four steps, a four step process that consists of preparation, drafting, review, which after which you might go back to drafting. This is a, a cycle and quality control and finalization. finalization. Preparation consists of assessing the scope of the project, setting timelines and objectives, collecting the necessary background material, and scheduling a kickoff meeting. In this meeting, you're gonna meet the team, is the, the, which are the, the people involved in the clinical trial, in charge of the clinical trial. You're gonna meet them. You're gonna agree on the timelines and the objectives. And here you're gonna ask them for the source document that you might need a synopsis, templates, style guides, all, all the documents you might need to, to write the, the, the official document. And the, the companies, they usually have a style guide and that's the that's, uh, instructions of how to write your document, you know, the, the, how to format tables and symbols and how, you know, very mm, tiny details of the documents that are important for the presentation of the document. Um, so the document is consistent. You cannot have one format, in, uh, one kind of formatting, one section, and another formatting in this second, in another section. You have the doc the whole document has to have the same formatting, and so you have to follow you follow a style guide uh, from the from the sponsors from the company uh, when writing the document, and you're gonna get this in the these documents in the kickoff meeting. Also, you may need publications to to start writing or a synopsis, as I mentioned. Um, or results if you're writing a CSR, a, a, a clinical study report. And you're gonna get all this. You're gonna have to, you have to be sure, make sure that you um, get these documents to start writing. So once um, the timelines have objectives and you have all your sources um, given, you start, you start writing or the, the drafting um, stage. And this requires a lot of, um, collaboration from the team and you get the team contributes. You might write alone, but um, nowadays it's, it's being asked more and more from the teams and the medical writers to do collaborative authoring. This, this means that all together are gonna um, work event, uh, um, simultaneously in a document. And this requires a lot of, to be very organized and focused on the tasks. So you, everyone is writing, not, it's not time for, for correcting, you know, um, for, for telling your colleagues <laughs> that something is not well written. It's that the team comes and they focus on their sections. These people are specialized in, in certain areas in uh, safety or, or um, non-clinical, for example, or that my, um, they might come from operations, et cetera. Like they, they, they are specialized in, in one, area of the clinical trial. And so they come in and input in that section. And you you as well, right? But you also coordinate all this, this task if it's collaborative authoring. If you're along writing, well, you get the information, the sources, you input whatever is necessary. And you might need to contact the team members to um, get the input, get their input. And they might send you something by email or a SharePoint. And, and you're going to have to put that information um, there by yourself. Um, once the drafting is ready, um, you send the document. Oh, sorry. No. You send the document to review. And during this time, so you send the document to review, the team reviews. You don't, you don't, you, you don't do anything. Is that the reviewers um, see the document, they make changes, they edit, um, and they write comments. Once you get the document back after the review uh, period, you gonna see a document with comments and changes made by the team. And you go through, you go through the document and you solve the, the comments or changes that you can do by yourself, that you don't, that don't require the, the team's input. But some other comments and, or changes are gonna require the team's input. They're gonna require a discussion by the team. And so you have to flag, you flag this, this um, comments during, this step, adjudication of comments. And you schedule a common resolution meeting, which is a, a meeting, it's a yeah, call, um, Zoom, <laughs> the Teams, whatever uh, um, app you, you used. 
and you invite the team to discuss those comments that you couldn't solve um, during the adjudication of comments uh, step. This it is important to know that um, the, this meeting is, is led by the writer. So you as a writer, you don't have to come up with the responses that, of the responses to comments. The team will discuss, but you as a writer lead the discussion. Then this means that you tell the team, you, 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 take, you take the team through the whole document. So they, you, you share your screen, the document is there and you tell that you go from, from comment to comment like guiding the team and controlling the time. <laughs> this is very important because it's a discussion. It's a scientific discussion between them and they are not aware of, you know, of the, 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 the um, clock ticking behind. And so you are the one controlling the, the time, how long these discussions take. The, the call, these calls take, um, last for an hour, my two hours sometimes usually one hour and and this people are very busy so you have to keep it um scheduled and um your aim as a writer is to get a response to all of those comments you couldn't solve so you have to go from the beginning to the doc to, from the beginning to the end of the document through all those comments solve them asking the the team to discuss on time and um I mean, as a beginner, can be um, nerve wracking, but it, but it's a practice. It requires a practice, and and it's it's very intellectually um, fulfilling because you get to hear all the discussions and as well to participate. Um, if if you have a scientific background, you can even yeah uh, offer your your um, perspective, and but as a writer as well, of course. Once the after the common resolution meeting. The, the document goes back to, to drafting. You're gonna um, implement the changes of, uh, as a result of the resulted from the reviewing process or the um, and the and the resolution meeting. You implement the, in, implement those changes in the document. You draft again, and then you send the document again to review. And this goes and, and this happens again. You adjudicate comments and you schedule an, a second call. Um, this. This is a cycle of drafting and reviewing can repeat several times, but I, what I've seen so far is that it usually is just twice. You know, you draft, you review, you draft, you review, and then you finalize your document. So be well, before finalizing your document, you send it to quality control. That's the last step. And this is another team. This is uh, um, from your organization of, or a, um, outside organization that reviews the document for correctness, um, that are consistency, that there is consistency in the data, in the formatting, in the style, um, that the sources, um, that the document follow, you know, um, they, so the QC team, sorry, the QC team cross-check your document with the sources. They check that you didn't come up with, <laughs> with something, that um, there's a justification for all the changes you've made in the document, there's a source. Um, supporting it. And with this feedback from QC, you implement their suggestions and changes. You're not obliged to do it. I mean, you all can always apply your own criteria, um, but they're quite very, they're very good at, at spotting mistakes that, you know, you, you might have um, lost during the process of writing. You implement those changes, you finalize the document, and then you send it to the approvers. The approvers are the, um, a small part of the team, three or four people, that sign off the document and they, they say that it's ready for publishing and to be sent to the agencies. <clears throat> so who can become a medical writer? Um, every career path is different and that's okay. You know, I'll share my career path. But you don't. But don't worry if it doesn't match yours, because the skills to becoming a medical writer are at the reach of everyone. So if it matches, I mean, you you can feel <laughs> um, happy about it. But um, it it doesn't mean that if you don't, you cannot go into this career. So I'm originally from Mexico, <laughs> which means, as, as Manu said in the introduction, that my native language is Spanish. 
And this proves right away that you don't have to be a native English speaker to work as a medical writer. In my case, it helped that I grew up near the border, near, near uh, California, USA. Um, so I became bilingual since I was very young age. But it did, 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 sorry, this didn't help uh, necessarily in me to become a good medical, regulatory medical writer because it wasn't until my PhD that I have access, um, start reading and writing in a scientific English. Um, after I did my bachelor and my master's in, in biology and neuroscience and my PhD in biomedicine, um, I, th that's when I, I started to, you know, get, get, not even in, during the bachelor, you know, it was really during the PhD that I read and wrote in, 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 in English, in scientific English. And, and so even if you're, if you're not a native English uh, speaker and you get, you get experience in writing later in life, it's, you know, it's okay. You can still become a regulatory medical writer. Um, after my, my PhD, I attended events on bioentrepreneurship where I met people working in biotech startups, it's people starting companies in, in the pharmaceutical um, industry. And this networking put me in contact with, with uh, people that ended up hiring me as a, a freelance scientific writer. So I, they needed for me, for me something very basic for, for, for scientists, which is... Um, studying literature, uh, researching the literature and finding the, the state of the art of, of a certain scientific topic. And I would write scientific reports. So that was basically my, my, my job as a scientific um, writer for them. However, at that time, I didn't know that medical writing was a career. I, really, I didn't know this was a thing. So I continued working in academia and moved to Japan where I work as a researcher for two years. And then I moved to Germany, and here I was. I wanted to leave academia. I wasn't. I was. I was convinced that I didn't want to continue in in the academic, um, in academic academic research. Um, so I told a friend, "Oh, it's you know, <laughs> how I'm gonna find a job here? Uh, I don't speak German. <laughs> I'm not." And she she introduced me to a friend who was like me, um, a, a, a scientist. She, he came from academia, and he was a Spanish speaker, a native Spanish speaker like me. And, and he was writing, he was working as a medical writer. So we got together and he talked to me about the European Medical Writers Association or EMWA and explained to me what the job of medical writer, um, medical writer entailed. And I felt that that matched to my personality. As I said, I like writing and I wanted to help people and I loved science, but I didn't want to do it in the, in the academia anymore, but I wanted to stay, be in touch and be close, work close to it. And I thought, oh, this, this matches my personality. This, this is close to my why. And the, the, the job description um, sounds pretty good. Um, so my strategy to ended up working as a medical writer was to um, be very proactive. I became a member and volunteer in the, in the in EMWA, in the European Medical Writers Association. And it was a connection there who told me about a position in the company I'm, I'm now employed. She knew that I was looking for a job as a medical writer. And when this position opened, she remembered me and she said, you know, like they're looking for a medical writer and apply. And I was lucky, <laughs> I suppose as well, and, and found and got the job. But there are many ways to become a medical writer, as I said, and you don't have to be a scientist to, be, to become a medical writer. Um, I know, from, I have colleagues that um, from other in, in other organizations that um, come from linguistics, for example. So they dominate the, the language, but the, the English language, but they don't they don't come with a scientific background, and they've been working as a medical medical writers for years now, for decades, because you you can it's something it's something you can learn, and you don't have to also you don't have to know the science behind all the health conditions that are there, because all that you learn during the process of writing a document. It requires, of course, you have to be quite fast in, in, in understanding the, the, the processes, the methods behind it. Um, but it's, as I said, it's, it's something you can learn at, at, um, while doing, doing, the pro doing writing the document, in the process of writing a document and, and um, in the job. So 
so if some of you that are here in the webinar now uh, want to transition to medical writing or are looking for your first job in medical writing, I want you to invite, I want to invite you to take action. Um, regardless of the medical writing you would like to pursue, medcoms, regulatory, or other types of medical writing, I think these are the things that you can do right now and the skills that you can start learning to become a medical writer. I'm gonna name three, there are many, but just to start focusing on something, I would say work on your English. If you're not, if you're like me, you're not a native English speaker, you know, it's a must. But even if you're an English native speaker, it's it's not necessarily, you don't necessarily dominate the language. You don't necessarily, you know, know good grammar and syntaxes and write beautiful sentences. And writing is not the same as, you know, talking and speaking and, and reading. Writing, it's it's a practice that you, you can start right now by blogging or volunteer to write articles, articles in the journals of this, uh, the medical, the different medical writers associations that are there. I really invite you to, to start writing wherever you can. I mean, it, it would help if you publish your articles in the journals of these associations because they, that would put you in front of potential employers, right? Who, who read these um, magazines, these journals. Network. This is very important. Um, the the two times that I I got um, job opportunities as a scientific writer or as a medical writer were through connections, and you can do start doing this by attending conference online, offline. Um, all all the conferences I've I've attended um, to in Emwa were offline were online. Sorry, because it was during the pandemic. So I've. I think this year is the first time I'm going to go um, to a conference in person and meet uh, my colleagues in the in the European Medical Writers Association. Um, but but start doing it, you know, attend conference, um, write in their journals, volunteer. So this so the people working in the in this area can start recognizing your face, knowing your name, getting to to know your work, and that will put you in front of the of the people that eventually will can make a decision or are looking for someone to to employ um tell everyone that you're transitioning careers if that's your case or that you're looking for a job in medical writing because um these people when they know about um offers they will have you in mind i get a lot of offers from recruiters in on linkedin um and i I mean, I'm happy with my job, so I'm not planning to change. And so I send them to my colleagues. I send them, you know, I, 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 I send the recruiter to people I know they're looking for a job in, in medical writing. And finally, I cannot emphasize this enough, polish your soft skills. As a medical writer, you work in different projects with different teams, and each time you're gonna have to adapt to different personalities, cultural backgrounds, ways of working, uh, be superbly organized, manage your time di diligently, have a thick skin to take criticism on your writing, be a team player, but also capable of working alone and manage conflict. All these are soft skills that you're gonna need in the job, um, on the job. And before becoming a medical writer, I didn't have I, I haven't I didn't have a clue that so many soft skills are required in this job. Yeah, the science is important, you know, understanding science and writing, all that is important, but it requires a lot of soft skills. So start if you if you think you're like more like a hard skill person, um, try to polish your soft skills as well. And 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 yeah, start practicing, you know, handling pe handling uh, people and and managing conflict and being organized. If if um, it requires a lot of, um, you have to be very organized. Or, or even and I'm not talking about like organized uh, in, in, on your desk. You know, you're, you're having an organized desk. I mean, um, because everything is of course on your on your computer. Everything is um, it's, it's, it's it's you have to ha you have to handle. Um, deal with different softwares and different accounts and passwords. And, and you have to be very organized in the documents you get, the sources, know where the documents are, uh, name them correctly so you don't get lost. And then you're like, oh, where is that document? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, the last thing you, wanna, you want to, 
you to happen. So um, be very organized as well. And yeah, as I said, thick, uh, you have to develop a thick skin because you cannot get very um, um, attached to your writing. After you, you love writing and, and you, maybe you got very excited writing a sentence and someone comes and just says like, no, <laughs> I don't like it, I change it. And, and it, you have to be okay with it because um, otherwise you won't enjoy the, the job. Um, so don't, don't get attached to your writing and develop a, a thick skin. And as well, as I mentioned during the, the calls where the team gets together and discuss um, others, others other members' comments, my conflict might, might rise. And you as a medical writer, you not only control the timing, as I said, but you also have to find a way to keep conflict low and, and, man, and, and manage to um, be, be diplomatic when solving it and, and avoiding to escalate. And that's a, a skill. That's a skill that requires practice. And, and I invite you to start working on your soft skills. Writing is thinking. To write well is to think clearly. That is, that is why it's so hard. I like this quote because it reminds me of my aim in medical writing. It might sound a little bit <laughs> negative, but it, it's, it, it invites, I, I feel when I read it, I have it on my LinkedIn profile. Um, it reminds me to, um, to my, um, reminds me to my, my aim in writing, which is to write clearly, concisely, and consistently. I, I don't, I want my writing to be, to, I don't want my writing to be confusing. I don't want my writing to be a speech <laughs> and that people get bored and reading it. And I want it to be organized. So it's consistent. It's not confusing as well. Consistent, consistent gives clarity. And this is my aim in med, uh, as a medical writer. And, and I think this, these are the three C's of good medical writing. And I think that if you succeed in writing like this, you can call, you can consider yourself a good regulatory medical writer. So if you go into this career, um, have, I would inv invite you to have this in mind, this, this three C's and aim for that. You know, it's not about perfection at all. You know, you don't, 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 don't aim for that. Uh, medical, regulatory medical writing, um, you, you deal with long documents. So it's normal that you're gonna, um, miss some mistakes and maybe maybe you you come to you read the, your document um, again in the future and you realize oh I could have said this better <laughs> or I could have written this better um, don't worry just just aim for this and eventually you'll come to it so thank you that's all thank you for your attention and let me know if you have any questions thank you so much Daniela for this wonderful and insightful presentation uh, may you please uh, sweet, uh, stop sharing the screen uh, now? Yes. Uh, we stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. You're welcome. You covered most of the important points, uh, you know, talking about what re medical uh, regulatory writing is, how it is written, who can become a medical regulatory writer. And of course, you highlighted about networking, which plays a big role in, you know, connecting us with right people and helping us to go there. Thank you so much for highlighting that. And most importantly, you talked about taking action. You know, most of us have the right skills and knowledge, but you know, we do not take action. You know, I was one of them long back. Mm. Uh, we should take action at the right time. And uh, to all the participants, you know, I invite you all to explore this wonderful field of medical writing and regulatory writing. Both Daniela and I would be more than happy to help you in whatever ways we can. And, you know, I had been advocating a lot about networking with right people. And we even did a full webinar on this topic. We had, you know, three, four hours of session on this. And this video is on YouTube. You can watch that at your leisure time and explore various options to network, how we can explore LinkedIn to network with right people. So thank you so much, uh, Daniela, for that wonderful session. And now I invite uh, you to take up your specific questions, ask your specific questions to Daniela and uh, both of us will try to answer. Just in case we are not able to answer it right now, we'll try to you know reply you as an email later on. We have your email ID since you're registered on Zoom. So 
please raise your virtual hand on Zoom and then uh, I'll start unmuting you. You can ask the question and then we'll continue from there. Just in case you don't want to ask the question uh, live, but you want to ask the question, put in the chat box. I'll read out for Daniela. Okay, for you. So Sachindra, you can unmute and then ask the question. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. yes, you are. Yes, go on. Very good afternoon to you, sir and ma'am. It is a very nice talk. I enjoyed it. I'm actually an M farm from Niper and uh, I'm about to complete my PhD, but I aim to have a career in medical writing because in my local town, I see a good ecosystem for medical writing. So that's why I got the basic and uh, the interesting motivation from ma'am. Actually, everything, the skill is important, but the action is very important. So my question is, so for a, a scientific per person like me, what should be the best? Uh, whether I should go for a training and then join an industry or I go directly to the industry, have uh, experience for three, four hours, uh, years and then move to my local town for uh, this startup sort of initiative in my local town. Okay, got it. So Daniela, you want to take that? I, 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 sorry, I didn't understand quite well the question. There's okay. a lot of background. So so right. can... Okay, so yeah. he's, he's, you know, uh, still uh, doing his PhD and he's a fresher. He wants to understand if he uh, has to do some kind of training to get into medical writing or uh, he should try just getting into medical writing. What, what is he studying? What is his background? He's uh, doing his PhD right now. On, on science? Uh, on Sachindra, what is that uh, PhD on topic? It's, I suppose it's like related you to... You can put in the chat box, Sachindra, what, what are you uh, doing a PhD on? What topic it is? So he is doing from Naipur. That means he must be from the size background. That for sure. Yeah, I mean, I suppose. Yeah. And so, he, okay. The question is, how can he? Um, yeah. Okay, Pharma. Yeah. Yeah. How can how can he get into medical writing? That's yeah. the, the the question. Um, so finish your PhD. <laughs> that would be the best credential. Um, but it, I mean, stay if you if it's possible for you. I know a lot of people there are just. Um, tired of their PhD and it's also okay to quit, you know, you don't have to stay for, uh, and, and even if you, and if you quit your PhD or you have quit your, quit your PhD, you can still become a regular clinical writer. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you want to finish your PhD, yeah, just finish it. And, and start, I mean, I, I guess I said networking, it's very important. Um, join all the uh, professional platforms. Um, I mean, if there's one in India, LinkedIn is the most international one. And, and put yourself out there in front of other medical writers, you know? Um, and because medical writers, we medical writers get a lot of uh, offers, um, job offers from recruiters, as I said. And of course we can add answers positively to, the, to all of them, but we send, we send them to our colleagues and, or we, we send them, um, post them on our profile. And then you'll see there, um, follow the medical writers, of course, as well, Absolutely. follow companies, et cetera. You know, networking is very important. Um, you can do some training. There are, there are courses um, given by different institutions. I'm not aware of official studies, you know, like in any university, um, of uh, um, studies, official studies on medical writing. So the, would, the, the best thing would be for you to, to attend um, conferences, as I said, um, of the there's an Australian Medical Writers Association that might be closer to, to you. Um, there's the, the American Medical Association, the European Medical Writers Association. So attend their conference, do workshops as well. That will give you an idea of documents, of the processes, et cetera. But uh, most of it, it will put you in front of people. And these are the people that hire you eventually. They would hire you eventually. So, sure. so do that and volunteer, uh, start writing. If you, if you like writing, start writing, volunteer to write in this journal, in their journals. And that, that for me would be the, 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 the best that you could do. Absolutely. And uh, from my side, I just want to add a few points here. Uh, for everyone who is uh, in India and planning to get into medical writing, uh, there are a lot of avenues right now from pharmaceutical companies, from agencies, and even from uh, associations and institutes. So the best thing to get into medical writing is to follow some leading medical writers on LinkedIn. Uh, you can follow both of us. Um, I post a lot of uh, information on LinkedIn on medical writing. 
and we have an association in india as well we have uh, you know telegram group on medical writing so you can join i'll send the link later on uh, we post a lot of opportunities related to medical writing on that so that is one option and coming to the training part uh, you know i would suggest you first publish couple of articles read about medical writing know more about it we have posted say about five or six videos on uh, youtube on medical writing medical affairs and medical communication specifically and now this video will also go over there it is on medical regulatory writing so you'll get a lot of ideas on what skills you need what kind of resources you should have and what kind of companies are recruiting you right so this gives a holistic approach to you and then connect with right people you know linkedin is the best platform right now for connecting with right people uh, recruiters companies the most of the recruiters they post on linkedin uh, regarding these vacancies and then if you uh, are suitable candidate you have the right kind of attitude and the skills do apply do not hesitate to apply for these opportunities you know most of us feel that okay now this is not matching that is not matching so i should not apply please don't feel that if you match about 30% of the job description just update your resume and apply okay don't just blindly keep applying for the jobs update the resume as per the job description at least 30% of the job description you should match and then apply and then keep attending the interviews you'll get lot of insights and ideas and uh, after this session i'll also send uh, you know for all of the, you who have registered for this session i'll be sending an email to you with some resources some books some guides on how to become a medical writer and that could be your starting point and of course i'll also send the links to other videos that we have done earlier and i'll also you know with uh, daniela's permission i'll send uh, her linkedin profile link and my pro- uh, linkedin profile link please do not spam uh, you know <laughs> send a proper message and the information that you want from us and then we'll try to help you out okay don't start shooting your resumes directly uh, in the inbox of linkedin that doesn't work uh, you know do your homework uh, you know we have also done a video on that earlier you can watch that as well so thank you sachindra for asking that question and uh, we'll take up the next question from venkat sir venkat sir yes please thank you for joining in from uk and uh, to to tell all this uh, you know uh, participants venkat sir will be speaking next week on career opportunities in the uk so do join us next saturday is to saturday at 2 pm we have been doing this webinar every saturday at 2 pm and we'll try to bring some insights from the industry from different parts of the world so venkat sir please continue thank you thank you manas um hi daniela uh it's hi. very uh, hi uh, my name is venkat uh, it's a nice presentation okay uh, the slides are also very good and uh, the narration is excellent okay thank you it is wonderful yeah so my question is um you know i am also a cmc writer i write uh, documents for module 3 just would like to understand what are the source documents you refer you know in various uh, phases mm. yeah. uh, fa- you have as you mentioned in the slide phase 1 mm-hmm. phase 2 phase 3 so uh, so could you please uh, give more detail what are the source documents and where do you yeah. get these documents mm-hmm. for example taking uh, ib as an ex- um, example investigator brochure yeah Yeah. yeah um so the sources of the documents of course depends on the document you're writing um in the case of the ib the investigators for sure of which i'm, I'm um, in fact currently writing uh, working on one right now it's the um, so previous versions of course of the document and um, and it's it, the, the investigators for sure is the research done so far right so is entails um the non clinical and the clinical so you need all that information you need the non clinical results if it's the first time you know if it's the first time to be investigators for sure you need the non clinical research and it pres- um, results and if there's some clinical research results already um to put, you have to put them there you explain um and also if they have if there's safety safety information about the drug um safety studies everything that's been done um it's the source of of the investigators for sure the investigators for sure um it's updated because of course as as the as the research research on the on the drug um evolves or uh, advances you get more information so you have yeah. to update the ib and the uh, 
you have to put this information. This is the source. And so and next time you get the IB and you have to update it, you're gonna have get the new, you know, the new um, data from the previous trial. The if it, there's an, an ongoing research, you also have to put it there. If there's some trials that haven't um, are still in process, they're recruiting still people, they're they're running tests, etc. You have mm -hmm. to put it there. Um, you update the IB when the you get um, one of the safety documents, the DSUR, and and you put that which brings all if, uh, safety information from um, of the drug, and it's a document you that it's updated yearly. So when the DSUR is updated. You have to bring that information to the IB and update your IB. So the sources of the documents are, as I said, depends on the kind of document, and and you're gonna. That's why you have to ask for them. You know, you don't okay. you, you don't know necessarily uh, in advance what the um, the stage of the IB you're you're required to write. And then you, when you get, um, if there's an if, if if it's an IB in an advanced this stage and in a drug that is in an advanced stage, mm -hmm. of course, you're going to head, you're going to have get a lot of sources as well. So, and you're going to get the previous version, as I said, and there you're going to see, okay, they have all this and you don't have your, if it's an update, you don't have to write the whole document. Right. So yeah. it varies a lot from yeah. project to project. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not, it's not something that you have to, um, how can I say you, you have to, you have to care. You have to wor worry about, don't worry. Um, about asking for these documents, but it's not your, it won't be your job to check those documents, you know, to check if they're, mm -hmm. if they are correct. If you get a publication, I mean, it's a publication, it's done, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you have to find a way to, okay, how, how these sources, where, where I'm going to put this information in this document, how, you know, how, how yeah. um, can be to get, you know, because sometimes you get a document written by other writer and you cannot change that. You cannot just, you know, start from zero. Exactly. And so yeah. you have to, you have to find a way to, to where, I mean, there are kind of instructions, you know, it's not that yeah. you have to be 100% creative on that, on this, yeah. Yeah. but you have to understand that where they came from, the new information you're getting or those sources, where did they fit in the document? Okay. And also that's, that's also you, um, you, you get when you when you get um you, you it, it's an it's a skill that you learn um by doing this job you know the, the thing with this with this job is that it's very it requires a lot of uh, practice so yeah. it, there's a lot of theory but you won't understand it if you don't write yeah exactly so yeah. so yeah um that that's the the I, I could talk mm. <laughs> endlessly yeah, about yeah. sources of documents types of sources but yeah. and and but yeah, the, the company would give them to you. Just you oh, just ask. Okay. Can you give me the? <laughs> just give me. Just you just ask for them, and then the company will give them. Yeah. To Who you. will be the cross-functional teams uh, usually work regularly? Uh, well, yeah, it's the uh, clinical operations. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, maybe <laughs> I don't know all their their names, their their uh -huh. positions. Um, yeah. It's it's a medical monitor, um, the the statistician. Some of them, you know, the team, there are teams of people. So it's like two or three statisticians, three, two or three from safety for pharmacovigilance, two or three people of the medical, uh, the medical director and medical monitor, clinical operations. It's, mm -hmm. it's a huge team. Okay. Um, and, and, and you're going to know when the, the project starts, you're going to know wh who, from who you get the sources, right? If you, if you eventually in the process of writing, you realize, oh, I forgot, or I don't have this document. You go back, you know, to your, maybe to the project manager, you have, you're going to have a project manager, or if you're, if you don't have a project manager, there's a project manager in the company you're working for. So you're working with, so you ask them, you know, I need this document. Can you send it to me? And then they send it to you. You don't have to acquire them. You don't have to download them from uh, PubMed or anything. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the clear explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Manosan. Thank you. See you all again uh, next week. Yeah. Thank <laughs> next you. Thank weekend. you so much. Yeah, we'll meet next week again. So thank yeah. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. So the next question. Uh, thank you, Daniela, for answering that, and thank you, Venkat, sir, for asking that question. And the uh, next question will be from John. Uh, John, please go on. You can unmute. Uh, one second. Yeah. You can unmute now, and then uh, just try. Yeah, you can. Yes, go on, please. 
first of all i have to thank uh, daniela and manoj that you are doing such a fantastic job of doing this session it's uh, i've learned a lot and i'm sure many others who have joined the session too uh, yes please do keep doing this especially for uh, medical writers who are trying to come up like me in life um, so what i'm my question is first is i have two questions one is what to what level of statistical knowledge that you require because that really scares me uh, when i see <laughs> all the statistical um, figures and uh, so i'm not a math person honestly um, so i'm a more of a medicine science student <laughs> <laughs> and uh, secondly my question is you know when uh, recruiters come back to you and ask you have you written an mdd have you written an mdr <laughs> and uh, um, honestly like you know i'm still learning myself like many others here so uh, how do you handle questions like this um, like you've written some reports you have not written any others and but you are still like you know you want to put yourself in a better position and uh, sound positive and encouraging and learning that you have the learning spirit and you have the capacity to learn more um so yeah these are my two questions and yes daniel i'm also very um, i'm a, i'm also a member of mwa like you and i've seen you sp speaking before so it's such a pleasure to connect with you again thank you so much yeah mm -hmm. Hi, hi, John. Yeah, I, uh, John, I, I, John, uh, um, I have John as a as a contact on LinkedIn. I saw her name and and I re I recognize her. Uh, we haven't met before, so uh, it's an example of how LinkedIn is is great to put uh, people in 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 touch. Um, so re regarding your question about statistics, <laughs> I I feel you there. <laughs> it's similar for me. I mean, I have a scientific background, but uh, statistics was not my uh, passion. And of course, I mean. If you if you have a scientific background, you probably done some statistics, um, very basic. If you come from medicine, um, you might not, might have not, and you can do some courses online. You know, there's the Coursera, all these online platforms, learning platforms. They give courses on statistics, and to be honest, basic statistics could be enough. You know, like all what what you would learn on those courses could be enough. Emwa has also a workshop on statistics. Um, and on in, in medical and clinical trials and and that could also you know doing that could also help but it's um eventually it's gonna um, the statistician gonna it's gonna see the document come in and write that section and and it's not your um your job as a writer there it's to make sure that it's consistent with formatting that it doesn't have uh mistakes um but not that it makes complete you know sense in the from the statistics perspective it's the statistician's job to do that um if you have a background in statistics and you understand that i mean great <laughs> but if you don't 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 worry i would i would recommend still to to do those courses i mentioned on basic statistics and and maybe a workshop on 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 conferences on mwa um but don't don't worry too much. Really, it's it's um, you're gonna get help in that area always. And the other questions, um, um, I see. So recruiters, recruiters ask how many documents you've written. Um, I it's hard. I know. I know. I mean, in any in any job, right? Uh, companies want you um, want people with five years of experience, <laughs> and and it's hard to um, might be hard to get a, an entry entry-level job in medical writing um well when they ask me i i i reply honestly <laughs> you know i've written this and this and that i i must say i if you in the presentation you saw i started write, working as a medical writing almost a year ago so i don't have you know the ton of experience i have a year of experience and i started of course as a beginner and there are some companies that imply here and that that employ um entry-level writers you know there there's people um, and as Manu said, you don't don't wait to have 100% of their of their um, the requisites because there's a lot of demand of medical writers and not enough um, advanced or senior medical writers. So they're gonna have to fire. They're gonna have to hire <laughs> junior stuff. And so be be honest. Be be honest. I would say the workshops you've done said if you if you've done workshops on documents specific documents said you know i've done a workshop on protocols i've had i have i, I did a workshop on uh clinical study reports i've 
you know, publish these uh, articles. I volunteer to publish these articles. Um, show show your interest in writing. You know, not only not only medical writing, but that you've written specific documents. Show that you you like writing. You know, that it's something that you're gonna enjoy, even if it's not a an article in medical writing or a sorry an an, an article regarding a document in medical writing. You know, um, and and what 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 helped me I, I'm, and might help anyone to get a job in medical writer is not necessarily the i mean an, an entry level of course you don't have the experience in writing documents but if you understand for example the drug development process and you can show this if you if you show that you've done specific courses perhaps in medical writing you know and that you have some experience with the job and with the people working in it that could put your your foot in the door um yeah and your cover letter you should um when you apply i know there's a lot of advice out there saying cover letters are you know a thing of the past but not in medical writing <laughs> because the, your cover your cover letter more than your cv is going to show you show the recruiter how well you write right so work on your uh cover letter more than your CV, because it's that's gonna show that you know how to write. Absolutely, totally agree with Daniela here. See, all we need to do is update our LinkedIn profile properly, keep our updated uh, profile there. You know, if you are trying to get into medical writing, the profile has to speak about medical writing and not everything. QA, QC, production, medical writing, not everything, just medical writing. And then showcase what you have done in medical writing. Maybe you have attended some conferences, you have gained some insights from there, got some certifications done, all of that. Okay. So thank you, Daniela, for that. And thank you so much uh, for, for asking that question, John, for asking that question. And it is the question for most of the medical writers. So there are a lot of other questions. Most of them I have answered in the chat box. Uh, we'll take one question from Priya Saini. You know, she has been, she has done her PhD, she has published many articles, she has, you know, some reg regulatory writing experience and also she has worked as a technical writer. Now she says, uh, you know, but the issue is, issue I'm facing is that maximum positions they're asking for experience, particularly specific to CSR, IB, ICF with at least two to three years of experience. They're not taking into account the writing experience, which I already have. How can I break into regulatory writing regulatory writing, though I am familiar with the regulatory documents. So Daniel, mm -hmm. you want to take that? You saw that? Yeah, it's a big question. Yes, I, I saw. Yeah. So they're asking for a specific documents. Um, ah, yeah, this is hard. <laughs> um, is it the, the, the trap, right? That you, they need experience, but how can you get experience? <laughs> you yes, get a chance yes, to get yes, experience. It's, it's always this. Um, so there's some, I know some, of some courses that give you the opportunity to to work on this uh, specific documents. For example, that um, the, the, um, there's one course that offers um, the the opportunity to uh, to download a CSR, a real CSR, from um, the European Medicines Agency website, and to and you the the course gives you a, a task which um, and tells you writing like a scientific a scientific um, article based on the CSR. So it's it's not that you write the CSR. I get it, but you the 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 experience of working with the CSR. You know, like studying the document. This, a CSR is a huge document, so yeah. it's hard to understand it at the beginning. It's just like you're totally lost. But the task allows you to the test. Yeah, the task allows you to have experience with the CSR. And so you can sell this to companies as as um, a mock, you know, you do, you have experience uh, on a mock with a mock task, in which you work with a CSR, right? Kind of like this. It's very specific, I know, but um, and and I mean, of course, it depend it depends on the company um, how they take this. <laughs> um, if they take it as experience, I, I'm with a CSR per se. Um, but there, there's some uh, ways to to access um, experience to gain to gain experience and knowledge with this kind of documents. Um, if you, I would in this in your case maybe mm, 
may, maybe, you know, to take, to get to those positions will require some more experience from your side, right? So I've maybe consider applying to a, I don't say, you know, uh, my, not, not you, more, more, less senior position, you know, and um, I think they're called, I don't know that the name for medical writers are different, but I um, like uh, medical writer two, something like that. It's, it's like a medium level of a, yeah, a yeah. medical writer. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, maybe, you know, and then there, there those, those positions might, might be easier for you to access, yeah. to have access to, to, and, and there you get the, the experience with those documents, right? Um, because I, I, I understand it, it, it's not that you, it's not that you easily can download a CSR and start writing it. it there are those, these are not documents easily accessible in some way to, to start working. Um, yeah, so I, I would recommend that maybe apply for a, um, less senior position and gain gain the experience there, or look for for courses that give you a specific experience a specific experience with a specific documents like the one I mentioned. Yeah, that yeah. that could also help. Yeah, thank you, Daniela, for answering that. I'd like to add some points here. Uh, Vishnu Pia, for you, you know, if the company is asking for a specific kind of experience, then try connecting with you know recruiters and medical writers on LinkedIn and try to gain some insights with respect to that kind of writing, that is one. And of course, we have a lot of resources on YouTube and you know we have on Amwa's website, we have an EMWA's website, everywhere a lot of resources are available. I'll be also sending some resources after collecting something from Daniela as well. So I'll send an email to you maybe on uh, tomorrow, day after tomorrow on Monday, probably Monday or Tuesday, I'll send an email to all of you after compiling all the resources and the videos, links that I have. And then that will give you a starting point. That is number one. Number two, if you are wanting to get into just medical writing or even medical marketing writing, there are a lot of freelance opportunities available right now in India. A uh, lot of companies which, uh, with whom I'm connected to, I can you know probably send out your resume and get them connected to you. At least the interview levels and you know rest all depends on how you perform and how you are able to get it. So that I'll do it. Uh, Please do connect with me later on after this session and then I'll see what best we can do together. Okay. So thank you so much for asking that question and Daniela, thank you for answering that. So with this, uh, you know, uh, we we have uh, done almost more than one hour now. Mm -hmm. So with this, we'll, <laughs> we'll try to end this session. Uh, you know, there are so many other questions which are very general. I've tried to reply in the chat box. And I'll be also sending a detailed email. So some of your answers will be there in the email as well. And please keep attending such sessions, you know, which is very important because you get new perspectives from different writers who are actually in the field. Okay. Yeah. So do that and, uh, you know, get connected to us. Uh, I'll be sending the LinkedIn links of uh, Daniela and myself. Uh, you may connect with us. And as I told initially, please do not spam. Uh, just mention your specific questions and we'll definitely try to help you out in whatever ways we can. And thank you so much for being with us. And Daniela, thank you so much for, you know, you could have done so many things on this Saturday afternoon, but you chose to be with us. That shows, you know, your, uh, you know, credibility and, you know, the giving attitude to give something back to the society and to the medical writers community. And Daniela is very passionate to help medical writers. She has been doing a lot of work on that. She has been writing a lot of blogs. So, you know, I'll, I'll be sending that links to some of the blogs as well. So, do read those blogs and you'll get some new insights and do connect with people. That is very, very important and take action. When, you know, once you've learned something, take some action. Even if you are writing some blogs, please do write blogs and share with people. You, know. you never know somebody will like that blog and get connected to you and something might happen. So all the best to all of you and uh, please do stay connected with us. And I have also shared the Telegram link. If you want, please do connect there. Because, you know, practically for me, it becomes very difficult to communicate about webinars all the, you know, every single week. I have more than uh, 7,000 people now connected and sending to sending an email to all of them is not possible. So I created this like, Telegram group. So I keep posting there. Uh, just stay there and then at least keep watching for the updates. And then also, you know, follow both of us on LinkedIn. You'll get a lot of ideas on LinkedIn. We post a lot of content. Uh, at least I post uh, two, three times a week. Uh, and Daniela also has started posting a lot of content on LinkedIn. 
So thank you so much, all of you, uh, for being with us on this Saturday. And thank you so much, Daniela. And we'll meet again, uh, you know, with another session. And if you are interested in uh, knowing career opportunities in the UK, please do join next Saturday at 2 p.m. sharp. We'll have a session and more details will be following. Uh, I'll be posting on LinkedIn and my Telegram uh, channel tomorrow or maybe today, end of the day. So thank you so much and stay tuned for more updates from us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all uh, for coming. Thanks. Stay you. in touch. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you so much, all. And uh, we'll meet again with some more exciting sessions. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Daniela. Thank you so much. Bye, Manoj. Thank Bye. you, everyone, for staying till the end. Ankita, Arya, Dinesh, Punashila, John, Jyoti, Kirtani, Kiran, <laughs> Kushwa, Lauren, so many people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And please don't forget to give the feedback and also specific questions if you have. Don't forget to ask, uh, you know, just in case uh, after the webinar, I'll try to respond to some of the questions later on. So thank you so much and uh, stay happy, stay safe and be a good medical writer. Thank you so much. Definitely. <laughs> Bye. Okay.